My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Well, I honestly can't believe this. I honestly can't. Like, I, I'm still coping with this at the time of recording this. I can't believe how much of a disappointment this game is. I, I can't, I really can't believe it. I've been fooled again, you know? You know the saying, fool me once, fool me twice? I've been fooled like 10 fucking times by now. You think I would learn? I think I would learn at some point, but no. And I called some of this out in my previous Cyberpunk video when I said the dangers of overhype, right? Yeah, it's all coming crashing down because everyone's lofty expectations were extremely unrealistic. Like, have these people ever played a video game before? But even then, even ignoring people's crazy expectations, this game doesn't meet some of the most basic expectations of an open world RPG. I can't believe CD Projekt Red released this. I can't fucking believe it, dude. And, you know, you've probably all seen the bugs by now if you've been keeping up with this game. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. I don't even know where to begin with this, because this game disappoints on so many levels. I... I have bullet points in front of me and I just... I don't... I still don't know. Like, it's crazy. It's... There's so much here. And the worst part is, deep underneath all the bugs and the half-thought-out mechanics and the basic bitch Ubisoft world design, I mean, seriously, this game is like a perfect hybrid between the mediocrity of Fallout 4 and like Watch Dogs. I mean, that's pretty much what this is, you know? It's, I got, I don't need, I seriously, guys, I can't even fucking talk about this. It's killing me. It's fucking killing me that this game is like this. And I already know my brother's just like smiling to himself. He's so smug, probably listening to this as soon as I release it. Cause he knew and I didn't want to believe it despite all the signs, despite the fact they would never show us gameplay for more than, you know, 30 seconds, despite the fact that they never drove a car more than 20 miles an hour in any of the trailers. All right, I guess I'll just start with the things that'll disappoint people who are expecting this to be Cyberpunk GTA, which I already said it wouldn't be, and I was extremely right about that. Like, I was more right about that than I ever would have hoped to be right about that. It's actually terrible. How basic this game is. Game runs like complete shit. NPCs are popping in and out in and out of existence. There's no AI for driving, period. You can just park a car in front of somebody and you'll have a lineup of cars behind you because they don't know how to drive around you because they just have their set path around the city. And if you shoot at them, they don't fucking do anything. Crowd AI is also non-existent. If you punch one guy, everyone either runs away screaming or just crouches and hides in fear. It's like, this is fucking cyberpunk. Half the crowd should be pulling out a gun shooting at you or some shit. Or should just not care that you punch a random civilian. I mean, really? Really? Ugh. The police system in this game is a complete joke, man. Like, this is probably the worst, like, GTA aspect of the game. I can't believe it's even in the game. Okay, so if you don't know, because there's no driving AI, all driving related encounters in this game are scripted. Like if anyone shows up in a car, it was scripted. Because there's no driving, guess how the police system works? Okay, so you commit a crime, right? You say you punch a civilian, whatever. The cops spawn behind you, directly behind you, not even around the corner, no fucking behind you hell I had one time just as an experiment because I wanted to see like I wanted to fight the cyber psycho squad one time just to see how it went I was in like a casino after doing a mission right I there's a bunch of people in there so I just punched four people which by the way each civilian you kill bumps you up a star so you can get to max stars really fucking fast I was running up the stairs because I was trying to set up a good position and as I opened the door upstairs, a guy spawned in front of me and killed me in one shot. Are you fucking kidding me? And the worst thing too is like, 
all you have to do basically is round the corner crouch for about 30 seconds and you've lost the cops they don't even attempt to actually look for you you know like this is it's so bad man it's so bad like losing the cops in a car is is like literally it's a joke because there's no driving AI you just keep driving to lose the cops they don't even chase you because they can't drive a car what is this fucking game yeah as I said already NPCs are extremely basic in this game they they basically have no AI they are just there to look pretty most of this game is there to look pretty in fact the world itself is probably the greatest looking city in a video game like period it is but it has no depth night city's beauty is skin deep man there's there's just nothing here it, it's cluttered with all these meaningless activities which are basically just go to a place shoot a guy and move on to the next thing and that's 80 percent of them how is this the same people who made Witcher 3? Like, Witcher 3 did have some shitty quests, don't get me wrong. Like, people pretend they were all good. They weren't. Like, there were some where you just go to a place and kill monsters, like every game. But they at least tried to contextualize quests. There's nothing contextualized here. It, it, a fixer calls you and says, Hey V, kill these guys here. Or, hey V, steal this, but also probably kill the guys here. It's like, that's literally it. Like, that's, that's 80%. The other 20% are some legitimately good quests. I actually did do some good quests in this game. I know some people have said, oh, there aren't any good side quests. No, there are some. You just got to know, like, which section of the quest log they're in. They're the side gigs. Anything that's not main quest or side gigs is probably shit, is, is what I learned. So, yeah, uh, the cars handle like shit. Like, they're just terrible. This is absolutely amateur. Everything is oversteered, and the acceleration's way too low. Top speed is way too low, probably because this game can't load in the assets fast enough, so they had to limit speed to, like, you know, I don't know, 50 miles an hour or something. It really feels like you can't go above, like, 60. Like, 60 is, like, the max. Despite what the speedometer tells you, I think it's a fucking lie. Yeah, I don't know. The cars just, they handle pretty poorly. Emergency brake just does not work. You can tap it and try to drift, and you'll just spin out, like, every time. So that's pretty useless. Uh, I don't know. It just feels wrong. It just feels wrong. I'm not really... I don't play racing games, but, you know. GTA V just shits on this game in the open world division, like, a thousand times over. And GTA V came out in 2013, and it still shits on every open world game, pretty much. I know a lot of people like to say like Red Dead Redemption 2 spoiled them for open world design but Red Dead Redemption 2 had such boring gameplay that I I can't really vouch for it GTA 5 yeah the gun plays pretty bad but I'd say pretty much everything else in that game was fun like everything in GTA 5 is good except the shooting and Cyberpunk's not much better in that department either I hate to say this but I think Cyberpunk might actually have worse shooting than Fallout 4 and not to say Fallout 4's was bad it was it was okay it was fine it was good enough it was it was one of the best parts of the game I hated almost everything else in Fallout 4 but the shooting was not one of the things I hated when cyberpunk despite the fact that CDPR said multiple times probably like at least a dozen times that enemies wouldn't be bullet sponges they're fucking bullet sponges dude enemies can take like 10 headshots sometimes it's fucking insane Another problem that is exacerbated by the by the bullet sponge enemies is constantly having to heal yourself with basically infinite healing items because you essentially get these inhalers that just magically heal 40% of your health and you get like a thousand of them over the course of the game. So you're just like chugging inhalers like an asthmatic and fucking it's it's so dumb like it's like what's even the point of the health system? Like, it's almost too fast-paced on hard mode in that sense, you know? Since you die in five shots, you have to constantly heal every time you get shot. So it gets really obnoxious fast. Now, I will say, I played the game on hard because I heard it was too easy on normal. And hard is a, it's a little too cranked in the opposite direction. So I'm debating just playing it on normal and just, like, blazing through the game or something. But, God, man, the AI, since AI is non-existent, they've... 
They barely take cover. They don't really flank. Sometimes they just stand out in the open and let you shoot them in the face, which is an effective strategy when you die in like five bullets on hard. What? An explosive barrel? Come on, man. What? What the fuck? God fucking damn it. Wait, what? They, they, they just said they would let me through. No. Yeah, so I think it's safe to say I hate myself since I never changed it back to normal mode after this. One of the promises was player choice in missions, right? That was a lie. That was a fucking lie straight up. I guarantee you those two main missions we were shown is like 90% of the choice. I have not played a single side mission that has like some kind of alternative ending other than leave the mission early. I got a few offers to leave the mission early and that's it, you know? Everything else, everything is a set conclusion. It's just like Fallout 4 with dialogue too. Dialogue choice means nothing. You can slightly affect your personality as V. Your fucking life path determines your story a little bit. And we were lied to about life path, by the way. Either that or maybe things were slightly taken out of context, but I'm pretty sure we were lied to about life path. Your life path only affects the first 30 minutes of the game. And then you just get a bonus dialogue choice and like one or two extra romances, I think, maybe. Something like that, which is stupid. The romance in itself is a fucking joke. Maybe we'll get into that, but... <laughs> This game, man, it's not an RPG. It's just not an RPG. It's an RPG in terms of, like, the shooting. Like, that's it. Like, your character builds are good. But the cyberware, man, the cyberware is so basic, too. There's no cutscene for getting cyberware. Cy most cyberware just adds a stat. Arms and legs are the only ones that affect gameplay. And I guess brain for hacking. I didn't do any hacking. I went full solo run and gun shit, pretty much. <sighs> it's like, oh my god, how do they fucking drop the ball this hard, dude? All these fake promises, man. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! I hate you! Is CDPR the new Peter Molly new? Like, I don't even want to compare it to Todd Howard, because I don't think Todd Howard lied this much. I mean, yeah, Crobcat, a great YouTuber, by the way, you should watch him if you don't. He makes compilations of gaming lies and, and awkward uh, video game awards moments, which the video game awards, yeah, I, I didn't even bother to watch this year, but that's a different subject. I'm sure he'll make a video on this game, I hope, but Crobcat did a compilation of Todd Howard's lies and Fuck, no, no. Th these are Peter Molly new levels with Fable. We're just, they straight up lying, basically, about features in the game. How much was cut? I really want to know. Because, okay, this is a slight spoiler, but right after your, your life path ending, there's a montage that was used in a bunch of trailers, by the way, that we were never told or led to believe was a montage. They seem like real missions. There's a montage... Of, of V and Jackie hanging out and becoming friends over the course of six months or whatever because there's a six month time skip after the life path to get familiar with Night City. So if you're hoping of the nomad life path being like, oh wow, you get to learn about how everything works in Night City. No, it's not how it works. I picked uh, Street Kid by the way anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The point is the life path mission is incredibly linear and it just wants to get you straight into the gameplay it's completely pointless honestly the life path given the limited amount of rpg elements in this game like in terms of storytelling and just player choice and all that shit what was the point of life paths man what was the point of doing that what was the point of genital customization that's another thing too like the character creator is kind of basic like it's not terrible i don't want to exaggerate and say it's trash but it's only really good for making really over-the-top cyberpunk characters, 
Which, you know, if you know anything about the tabletop game, it's fitting. Because some people were expecting this to be more like Blade Runner, but Cyberpunk 2020 was never Blade Runner. I mean, you could do Blade Runner things with it, but the tone is completely different. It's more like Johnny Mnemonic, uh, which none of you have seen that probably, but whatever. I, I know I got some older audience members, older than me anyway, so you guys have probably seen it. I don't know, there's just a lot of parts of this game that just feel so unfinished. There are just a lot of missing sound effects, some of which are glitches, but some were just left in. Like, for example, I did a lot of crafting because crafting lets you upgrade guns, which alleviates the terrible loot system, which I'll get to in a second. But there's no sound effect for crafting something. None. You, you hold X or, uh, you know, whatever, E or R or F or whatever the fuck I held, I don't even remember. Maybe you click on it with the mouse. Whatever the fuck you do, you hold the button, it makes the thing, there's no sound. Absolutely no sound. And it reminds me of Rage. Remember all the way back, that was my second video <laughs> ever, long time fans. But remember how I ranted about the shitty uh, crafting system in Rage? Yeah, it's the exact same crafting system. <laughs> you have to just hold the button over and over and over and over again to make a bunch of healing items and stuff that you don't even need. I had like 90 something healing items at one point, even on hard. Because healing's not the problem, it's dying in five shots is the problem. Yeah, well, I don't know. Back to the character creating thing, though. There's no in-game character creation, by the way. Like, after the you create your character, the only thing you can change is your clothes, which have stats, by the way. So you're gonna look like fucking hobo gutter trash the entire game if you want high armor. Because, yeah, no, fucking... People drop clothes they're not even wearing. If you're expecting this to be like Bethesda, where like, people actually carry what's in their inventory, the only thing they carry is their gun. And even the stats of that are probably not realistically what they're using, because it's just not that type of game. But at least they drop the gun they're using, so I'll give them a little credit for that. But no, they just drop random clothing articles that are not even on their body. It's fucking stupid. And then, we have the shitty ass loot system which is the most basic bitch loot system in any loot game ever. I don't even like loot games. Borderlands probably handles the loot system, you know, close to the best. I also really like Destiny 2's loot, personally, back when I played that. But no, in Cyberpunk, guess what they did? They did the exact same thing they did in Witcher 3, which people seem to forget how bad the loot was in Witcher 3, but basically, it means every enemy drops a bunch of worthless crap that scales to your level and so you'll pick up a thousand of the same ten guns over and over again just with slightly different numbers and basically no effect on gameplay whatsoever like why do people keep doing this just copy fallout just copy fallout why do you need to do this stupid shit it's terrible I hate it just make it so better guns drop as you get further in the game. That's what New Vegas did, you know? Start out with like a shitty 357 revolver and like the 9mm pistol. And then by the end of the game, you're fucking shooting like 50 caliber SMGs, you know? Like, just do that again. Why do you have to have like, oh, well, this level 6 SMG does two more damage than my level 5 SMG, but they look exactly the same, except one's green. Fuck this, dude. It's terrible. The only good part about it is if you invest in crafting, you can upgrade the iconic guns to higher rarities. Because the, the iconic weapons, like, iconic is considered its own separate thing. Because those are, the, obviously, those are the special legendary weapons. But they also have a rarity, so you have to upgrade them from, like, rare to epic to legendary, right? So that's kind of cool. Those are the only guns that are worth keeping, though. Because even though you can upgrade guns, if you invest in crafting, you can only upgrade them by, like, one or two levels at a time. I mean, they don't really show you, but you can tell from the DPS increase. It doesn't level it to your current level, like I thought earlier, no. Because I kept a gun that was like from level 6 or whatever and tried upgrading it when I was like level 17 and no, it didn't even come close to my level 17 guns. So it's like, are you fucking serious? What is the point then? It's 
guns are so disposable. You're not going to be attached to anything except iconic guns. I hate loot games like this. I hate loot games like this. I hate it. So you're going to be constantly checking bodies and picking up hundreds of junk and he healing items and grenades and checking to see if a gun does one more damage than your last gun. And there are some cool guns, that's the worst part. Like, there are some really cool guns. There's a precision rifle that's actually like a shotgun. It's a long range shotgun, basically. And it's a tech gun, so if you charge it up, it can shoot through walls. And that's cool. The problem is, you know, when I level up three times, I'm never gonna use it again, because it's not worth upgrading. I'll probably find another one eventually that's exactly the same. Fucking amateur. So you always look like absolute trash, and it's in first person anyway, so you can't even see yourself 99% of the time, which is what everybody worried about anyway. On the inventory screen, you get to look at yourself, but it's like, I don't know. The only time I really got to admire my weird, over-the-top, horrifying character is in a mirror, and there are some mirrors in the game. But that's the only purpose they serve, is to remind yourself, yeah, I actually made this character. Because V, V is not you, dude. V is 80% a pre-established character. That's one of the big complaints about this from a role-playing perspective. Like, this isn't like Mass Effect. This is way more, again, like Fallout 4, where fucking, because it's voice acted, and because it's such a huge game, they can't afford to actually have dialogue choices matter. So, instead, you'll have, at most, three options for something to say and then a couple optional question options, right? So it's just like Fallout 4, where Fallout 4 had yes, sarcasm, no, and ask question. It's almost exactly like that in this game, except I would say most of the time, all you have is yes and no. Like there's not, like sarcasm is just, V already is like kind of like an edgy boy like asshole type of character like it's hard to not be an asshole because sometimes there's no non-asshole option which i know fits you know night city and you being a mercenary but again there's no role-playing aspect like fallout new vegas shits on this game i know i i'm doing gaming circle jerk stuff again but fallout new vegas shits on this game in so many ways especially the mission design why did Cyberpunk 2077 need a thousand mission activities like a Ubisoft game? Why? Why didn't they just go the Bethesda route and have like maybe a hundred quests at the very most across the entire game and just, they don't all have to be good, but you try to actually have player choice matter. Like th this game has skill checks for dialogue, right? But almost every time, it just gives you more info or slightly impresses the NPC you're talking to, like a Telltale game. It, like, it's like, all it's missing is, you know, like, uh, Judy will remember this, or remember that, you know? Fucking, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> just want to go inside. Don't want any bad blood with animals. Well, that's a fucking relief. Cause if you did, I'd have to fuck you up myself. And I ain't in the mood. So we can go in. You can delta the fuck off! I was leveling reflexes, body, and technical ability, right? So that covers a decent amount of the skill checks I could actually do over half the ones I saw. Cause there is no dedicated speech skill. The closest thing to that, I guess, is cool, but even cool only appears slightly more often than the other skill checks, right? So, I could actually do most of the skill checks, and almost every time they did nothing. The only time it actually affected something was when I was doing a side quest of, like, this cyber-psycho veteran dude who um, had stolen some medicine, right? So, you know, he aims a gun at you, and you can talk him down and actually not kill him, if you have high enough body, because you relate to him on like a military level, because I guess body equals military experience for some reason, which I guess kind of makes sense, because body is like the solo stat, which, I, I, whatever, I'm getting into too much detail. But the point is, um, what happens is, he doesn't shoot you, he hands over the medicine, and then when you leave the room, he actually shoots himself. So that was kind of a sad little thing. I like that. And there are some good quests in this game. And like Witcher 3, they're kind of tied into the main quest, because, like, 
you know, everyone remembers the Bloody Baron, even though most of that quest line was actually part of the main quest, which people forget in Witcher 3. But, the end of the quest line was a side quest. And they do a similar thing in this game, and that's where you're going to get your better side quests, are the ones that relate to the main story in some way. Uh, I, this is major spoilers, so skip to timestamp. But basically, if you've been keeping up with this game, um, you know, you know Judy and Evelyn, right? Judy is a fucking lesbian, so sorry guys. Sorry, like, 80% of the player base. You don't get to be with best girl. Just like Outer Worlds, they pulled this fucking shit again. Making best girl lesbian. Fuck off. Also, Meredith is a one-night stand. Get fucked. Meredith, they completely shit on her character. Completely. So, if you're into that, you got fucked. Sorry. False advertising. Um, and it's a shit scene, too. But Judy... Like, basically, Evelyn gets kidnapped by some scavs, and you have to save her as part of the main quest. But she's, like, mortally wounded, and Judy's all big sad. Because obviously they were together at some point, even if they never tell you. And so later you get a call from her and you show up to her apartment and Evelyn killed herself. And so that was actually a pretty touching scene. The problem is, I imagine that's probably a pretty important romance moment if you're female V. If you're male V though, you're kind of just like, I don't know, you provide emotional support, which I suppose, you know, is the appropriate thing to do in that situation. Like, I don't know, even though I was pretty invested in the scene, it just kind of like ended Maybe that's not the best example of a good quest. A better quest was, okay, so still in spoilers, still in spoilers, but uh, after Jackie dies, which you can't change, by the way, fucking, I knew that, though. Like, I feel like as soon as they showed him dying, I'm like, well, that's going to be happen no matter what. There's no way you can change that. In fact, there's almost no player choice in Act 1 whatsoever. Basically, you can't affect anything that happens, nothing you say matters, they kind of pretend that you have a choice to like cut a deal with Evelyn at some point, but it doesn't mean anything in the end. But after that happens, uh, you get a call from Jackie's mom and you get to hold a funeral for him. And it's actually really touching because like Jackie's girlfriend Misty's there too, and she's not invited to the funeral because Jackie's mom hates her. And so like you have like a double personal moment where you have a 1v1 with her. And then you also have the funeral directly afterward, and you get to pick, like, one of Jackie's personal items to, like, say goodbye to him. And so, it, I actually felt something for a character I, you know, I knew was going to die no matter what. So, that's, that's an accomplishment. One more spoiler as well for fans of the tabletop game. But essentially, well, as far as I played in the game, there's two moments where you actually play through Johnny Silverhand's backstory, right? And these are probably the most fun parts of the game, combat-wise. And story-wise, they're pretty compelling as well, despite the fact that you're not really given that much to work with. If you're not familiar with the source material, you won't know these characters, really. But the reason why it's so fun is because Johnny Silverhand, his hand cannon is essentially a hand cannon from Destiny. I mean, it one-hit headshots everybody and just explodes their heads. It's awesome. It's really fun, actually. And there's also some more interesting stuff, too. Like, there's a quest where you're hired to kill a guy, and someone comes along with you, and you chase down a police van, and when you catch up with them, the guy gets out, he's gonna shoot him, and he gets killed by a cop, right? And it turns out the guy he wanted to kill was like a prisoner who killed, you know, I don't know, that guy's brother or one of his, someone he cared about, right? And the prisoner had found God in prison, right? Is that cliche? But they actually do the cliche really well, surprisingly, in the cyberpunk universe. Because, like, you go home and you find out that, like, one of the people that the dude killed, that guy's sister forgave the murderer, prisoner man. You know, I fucking see, it's hard to explain things when you don't remember names. But the point is, prisoner guy found God through her because she had forgiven him and had written him letters in prison and stuff. Um, and you kind of just follow this guy around, right? And the whole point of the quest is that the guy is going to be crucified for a brain dance for some really fucked up 
I guess, probably some strangely perverted people and also weirdly highly religious maniac people. You know, because, I don't know, everyone's a degenerate in the world of cyberpunk, so of course they want to film a live crucifixion. <laughs> so you just kind of like follow this guy's last day alive and like, it's kind of interesting, I don't know, it, it was an interesting concept. But th that being said, like, despite these few good quests, I haven't found anything on the level of Deus Ex that actually questions, like, transhumanism, you know? Like, there's barely any of that here. Like, even when you have a literal, like, personality double living in your head, they rarely really question, like, is that a real person, you know? Like, I know I kind of criticize Soma for this a little bit, but I still think it's an interesting concept like having a, a perfect copy of someone in data. Is that really them? Is that really a person? Is there a soul, you know? Like I'm not really religious, so I don't know if I really believe in a soul, but the point is it still makes for an interesting question, you know? And there's barely any of that here. Like it's, that's like Cyberpunk 101, you know? Deus Ex did a much, much better job with that. I don't know, man. I just feel like I'm rambling at this point, but like, Another thing too, like the shooting is just it, fucking, you know, it's just uh, for something you have to do a million times, you think they would have made it a little better, just a little better, you know, just a little better. Instead, you know, the fucking God, this game feels so half baked after they fix all the bugs of which there are many. It's not even worth going into. It's it's insanely buggy. In fact, people are saying the current gen version of the game is just a scam. Which, I believe it, man. I believe it. You can see the videos for yourself, you know. Performance is a joke. Dude, CD Projekt Red's dead, man. They're dead. I don't know, I don't think they can come back from this. I'm gonna be honest. Like, they just went from probably the most pro-consumer game corporation that's not like a small indie studio to, you know, EA. They, they just went to EA levels in one game. Are you fucking serious right now? Like, I, I can't. I can't even believe this. Oh man, I don't even, dude, I don't know. I mean, I'm still gonna finish the game, but I'm definitely not gonna do any kind of full review. It doesn't need one. The point is, don't buy this game right now. Maybe in a couple months, when they patch a bunch of shit. And if all you have is a PS4 or Xbox One, definitely don't buy this game. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just never do that. Just don't do it. There, it's never gonna be in a good state. Even if it's in a good state, the graphics will look so shit, I'm sure. I mean, I think it's like, I heard it's at 720p and doesn't even hit 30 frames. Like, are you fucking serious? The truth is, CD Projekt Red lied to everybody. They lied to everybody multiple times over the course of two years. And so you can't trust them. You just can't trust them anymore. It doesn't matter. There could be people in that studio who still really care about games and want to make a good game. And there are parts of this game that are great, but at the end of the day, it's just another soulless shooter in a very beautiful open world. A, an open world that is like a really shitty matrix, you know, the simulation fucking falls apart as soon as you prod at anything outside of a quest. You know, I think somebody, I read this, but somebody said, the world of Cyberpunk 2077 is like a beautiful loading screen in between quests. You know, yeah, I mean, basically, it looks beautiful, but there's nothing you can do. There's nothing. There's just nothing you can do with it. Yeah, one last note from Future Synthetic Man. After playing roughly another eight hours, I will say that the combat gets better the further you get into the game, especially the more cyberware you have, the more fun it is, especially when you have the, the missile launcher in your arm. That makes things a lot more fun. And, I don't know, things just seem to be a lot more fast-paced as long as you're appropriately leveled. That's the thing, though. What they tell you with jobs is just the difficulty level based on your level, right? The problem is, moderate is a huge level range. I've done moderates where enemies take like five shotgun shots to the face, and I've done moderates where everyone dies in basically one shot. And I can tell you, the latter was much more fun than the former. So, it's still conflicting in my head. And also, I did get to a point in the story where there actually was a major choice that actually had an effect on the game, so that was cool. And I just gotta say, in general, the main story missions are pretty compelling. 
and the, a lot of the major side quests are also interesting to a point. Even if player choice isn't really a factor, it's still an interesting little story, you know? Like, this game didn't need to be an open world game, you know? If they had figured out a way to just make it, like, on rails with, like, these optional side quests, maybe, like, mini sandboxes like Deus Ex, this probably would have been a much better game. Because you can see where the love lies in the world itself, for one, just how amazing it looks, and also, two, the care that went into telling these stories. You know, there's obviously a lot of effort put into the main quest, and there's a decent amount of effort put in a lot of the side quests, you know? It's just everything outside of that is a joke. Lesson here is never get hyped for a video game ever again, because you will be disappointed every time. Because gaming is dying. It is. I can't blame gamers for this one. This is all on CD Projekt Red. It's all on them, man. We had no reason to believe they would scam us. None. I mean, again, the red there were red flags. I'm not going to say there weren't red flags, but fuck, dude. This is like the biggest heel turn in gaming ever, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Seems like it. Because at least with Bethesda, it was gradual, man. That's why I wasn't disappointed by Fallout 76. I knew it was going to be shit. I played Fallout 4. And yeah, Fallout 76 is a lot worse, but Fallout 4 is still... This is Fallout 4, dude. I'm just saying. Cyberpunk 2077 is Fallout 4 plus Watch Dogs. That's what it is. Just don't do it to yourself, man. If you haven't bought the game, don't buy it. Don't do it. Alright, that's it. Okay. I, don't worry, guys. I think I'm going to actually cover some legitimately good games. Uh, I'm going to cover an indie game in a week or two. I'm going to cover Darksiders because I promised to cover Darksiders and I don't want to go against my word. Well, I don't know. I try to be I try to be honest with you guys, you know. I said I would cover Darksiders, so I will do it. I like Darksiders. So it won't be won't be hard. The the game the indie game is Noida, which I'm aware that a lot of people have already talked about Noida, but you know, it's another Patreon request. So I'll talk about Noida. It looks fun anyway. Fun and simple. At least it won't take like 30 hours of gameplay to cover it, right? <laughs> Probably not. Other than that, I don't know. I kind of still want to, you know, talk about Deus Ex Human Revolution. I'm going to wait till I can tolerate stealth again because uh, Thief kind of burnt me out on stealth, I'll be honest. Playing two, two stealth games back to back will do that to you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping for next year to be better than this one. I don't even need to talk about 2020, but this has been... God, dude. Y'all know. Y'all know. You all know how bad this year has been. I don't need to talk about it. But this has just been like the icing on the cake. 2020 has just ruined everything. <laughs> Not one good thing came out of this year, pretty much. Whatever. I guess I still have to play Doom Eternal. In January, I plan to talk about five good and five disappointing or bad games that I played this year so Doom Eternal I think will at least be a good one I'll finally play it all right that that's it I've rambled on long enough I'll see you next time guys